One year ago, I began a side project with the intention to see, could I build a fresh new audience from scratch in the personal development field, which is where I know a lot of you are trying to build an authentic business as well. And so now in this video, I'm ready to reveal what that side project is and share with you what are my top lessons learned. So first of all, let me share with you the lessons. And then towards the end of the video, I will reveal what that side project is. So I started this side project in the July, in, literally on July 1st of 2018. And the original intention was to see for all of you who are trying to build an authentic business from in a, in a, in a niche that's not typically money-making. Uh, and if you don't know, the typical money-making niches for authentic businesses are um, you know, health and wellness, relationships and career slash finance slash business. And, but a lot of you are trying to build a business in the realm of spiritual development, spiritual growth, personal development, inner, inner development. And that's typically not uh, immediately seen as a money-making niche. So I was wondering, well, could I, could I do it? I wanted to experience what it was like in your shoes. That's, that was the main point. So I started a brand new Facebook page and I started writing about my thoughts on personal development and spiritual growth. And I started running Facebook ads because I was hiding that page, purposefully hiding that page from all of my friends, all of my colleagues, all of my clients, all of my current fans. So none of you knew uh, what it was so that I could have a real experiment for what it was like building an audience as if I was nobody, as I was starting with no connections, none of my friends helping, none of my, you know, nobody helping me, but strangers using Facebook ads to reach them. So first lesson is that yes, Facebook ads absolutely works, even in a niche that I'm not an expert in, personal growth, spiritual development. Um, I have no credentials there. I've never taken a single training. I've, well, I'm sure I've taken various classes here or there, but no sustained training in spiritual development, no sustained training in personal growth. Um, of course, like everybody, I've read self-help books. Uh, I've read lots of articles, watched lots of videos just for my own personal interest, but I've never had a guru. I've never studied with one person extensively. Um, it was just my own thoughts, just my own ideas, my own intuitions, experiences, kind of amalgamations of various things I've read over the years and studied over the years. So Facebook ads really does work um, for even something I had no credentials in. And it works because after a few months of, uh, you know, advertising my, my articles. So I, I wrote articles for the first few months and then I started doing Facebook live videos there on that page, on that new page as well. And I started spending advertising dollars to share the, my writings and my videos to people who might like this kind of stuff. And after a few months of, uh, you know, really after, I would say two months of doing ads, you know, once a week ads, um, I started maybe even after a month, I started seeing regular names, you know, liking and commenting on my content. So the building of a community happened I shouldn't say community, a building of a regular audience happened pretty quickly within a few weeks of doing ads. Okay, so if you haven't yet started doing Facebook ads, maybe you have other ways of getting the word out about your message, but it really is the easiest way because I was only spending one to two hours a week. Honestly, some weeks I was only spending an hour on the side project. Some weeks I was spending up to two hours. So I don't know how much time you're spending in your business. It's probably more than two hours a week. Okay. But if you had very little time to build an audience, 
Facebook ads, as far as I know, is the easiest way to, to, to do that because you can pick specifically what kinds of people have what kinds of interests uh, to, to see your writings or to see your videos. What other platform allows that easily? Google ads is the next other platform that's so big, but Google ads is much harder to run than Facebook ads. Um, Twitter ads, I have not really tried Twitter ads, but I'm going to try that sometime this year. LinkedIn ads is very expensive. Every, every time I tried it, it just, it's way more expensive than Facebook ads to reach, to reach people. Um, YouTube ads is Google ads, but it's also very complicated and, and difficult to do, very competitive there. So Facebook ads is really the best thing. Uh, other than that, you might have friends and family help you out, spread the word, right? But I didn't have the benefit of friends and family because of the side project it was trying to be anonymous. And, uh, you know, partnerships is another wonderful thing. But again, I was trying to be anonymous, so I couldn't form partnerships because I would reveal my name if I was forming partnerships, contacting people. Hi, I'm anonymous. No, that wouldn't work, right? Um, so I couldn't use the normal methods of promotion to, to get the message out. And ads, paid ads, is anybody can do it, whether you're anonymous or not, okay? So it really does work. And um, a year of, into doing it, I now have a regular following uh, on that side project. And lots and lots, you know, thousands of people have commented or liked my post over the past year. And I could easily reach them again with Facebook ads, the, the people who have engaged with my content. So that's one big lesson is that Facebook ads really does work to grow an audience, the right kind of audience. Um, now, I have to say that I didn't give myself enough time to test audiences properly. If you've taken my Facebook ads course, you know how important it is to test audiences. But given my limited time in, in one to two, can, imagine this, in just one to two hours a week, I had to write an article, make a video, and run Facebook ads. So, you know, it took me, well, now, now I can write a, a short article for that side project in about 30 to 45 minutes. So I'm pretty quick. And then I make a video in about 15 minutes and then I take, it takes me about, you know, 15 to 30 minutes to, to, to run some ads, but I, I didn't have the time to really test audience as well. So I did a little bit of testing, but I know I could have done a better job if I had another half hour to an hour to test audiences every week to get better at reaching the right people. So I know I could have reached even more, even better people or even more of the right people. And if you have more than two hours a week to spend on your business, you too can reach the right people by testing audiences carefully through Facebook ads. So that's what, that's what I wish I would have done. And I will, well, I'll see if again, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's going to happen after the, after this. Um, so number one lesson, Facebook ads really does work. I rec that's why I recommend it to everybody. If you have $30 a month to get to market your business, $30 a month to market your business, then the $30 a month I would spend on Facebook ads. That's what I would recommend to everybody. Okay. Now, if you want to learn how to do it, spend another hundred dollars one time, not per month, but just spend a hundred dollars with me to learn Facebook ads. And then you'll, you'll learn, you know how to do it. And then you can spend $30 going forward to market your business, to get your message out to the right people. So Facebook ads really does work to build, to build an audience. And that's not just my side project. I've seen it work for my clients as well and for my own main business, all that. So the second main lesson that I learned um, personally that I really experienced is that content leads to clarity. Because when I started, I'm not an expert in personal growth. I mean, I'm, I'm an expert in my own life, just as you are in your own life. But I never claimed to be an expert to help other people grow themselves spiritually. I'm not a, you know, priest, pastor, you know, uh, spiritual leader or whatever. I never branded myself as that. And so I, I'm, I'm just like you probably. I just, I've, you probably have gotten more spiritual training than I have or personal development training. You've taken more, I bet you've taken more classes. I, I don't, I don't take that many online classes. I take a few here and there over the years, but, um, Anyway, I, yeah, so I'm, I'm just, an, I'm just, a, I'm just an everyday person an everyday George when it comes to spiritual development, personal growth, but I dared 
I dared start, possibly start a business mentoring people on spiritual growth and personal development. And I dare you as well to do whatever in, your, in whatever field you want to become a master in. I dare you because I dared myself and I did it. And now the people on that page see me as some kind of spiritual guru or master or not. I mean, nobody calls me that, but I can certainly, I mean, they keep coming back. So they, they, they respect me in terms of spiritual development, personal growth, self-help the, you know, and if I developed courses, they probably would buy it. You know, if I developed client opportunity, if I allowed people to become my clients, they probably would say yes. So um, I developed a following who respect me and like look forward to my content uh, in terms of spiritual development and personal. And I, like I said, a year ago, I was just some guy who likes to read books. You now here, I don't even read that many books. I may be complete. I, I probably finish reading maybe two books a year. Honestly, I'm, I'm not a very good reader, but I reflect on life, you know, just like all of us do. Right. So, um, so, so I started out with no, I don't know what, if I, if I, a year ago, if, if someone says, okay, George, please counsel and coach me in spiritual development, personal growth, how to become a better person. I'd be like, I, I guess, I don't know. I'll just, I'll figure it out. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what the pathway is. I don't know. I don't have the work of Byron Katie or any, anyone else's work or anyone else's methodology. I don't know. I just making it up as I go along. Right. So I wouldn't know. But now after one year of consistently writing articles, just whatever's true for me in the moment, whatever happened to me that week that I wanted to write about, or whatever I was reminded of, some concept that I was reminded of, just a year of doing that later, now I have a framework. Now I have a framework. Now I'm like, okay, do you want to work with me as your spiritual counselor, as your personal growth coach? I have a framework. I have these four steps now that I could, I feel confident to help you develop, to walk you through. Content leads to clarity. So for those of you who are saying, George, I can't work on your courses yet. I can't work with you yet as a coach because I have to clarify my message first before I can, you know, I can do my marketing. I have to clarify my framework first before I can get out there with my content. Okay, maybe you could do that successfully, but from what I've seen, People spend far too long trying to do that, trying to clarify their message first before getting out there and building an audience. They spend far too long at that. When the whole time, during the entire message clarifying process, they could have been building an audience at the same time. They could have saved themselves years of building a business. They could have saved themselves years before they start to build a, a real business. They, because step one in my in my business framework, my, my authentic business framework, step one is to build an audience, not get clarity. You get clarity by building an audience, not the other way around. You don't get clarity and then build an audience and then let people know what you're about. You let people know what you're about today, what you think today, what insights are, are, are true in, in your life today, whatever that may be, and then you figure out the framework later. And then you figure out your message later. And then you figure out your brand and your, and your tagline and what your professional title is and your bio and your about page. All that comes after you build an audience first, after you build a real following of people who says, I don't know what you talk about, but I really like you. I, every week I come here, you talk about different things and I really like you. Great, now you have an audience. Now you can clarify with their help what you're, what your title is, what your program is, what your framework is, what your modality, what your, um, what your outline is, what, what your products are, what your about page should say. You do that with an audience who like you already just for who you are without having to pretend to be anybody. So that's what I did in that, on that page. I just showed up every week with, okay, this week I wanna talk about this. I don't know if it fits into some framework or whatever. I don't, I don't know if it fits into some sequence. I don't know, sequence, not sequence. And after a year of doing that, just for an hour or two a week, now I have a sequence. Now I have a framework because now I can look back and go, oh yeah, that makes sense. Oh yeah, I talked about that then. Oh yeah, I talked about that then. Oh, let me put that in, fit that into a framework now. 
Okay. So I learned that lesson personally now, you know, in a niche that I was not an expert in, I have no training in, I'm just an everyday person in. Okay. So that's my second big lesson is that content truly leads to clarity, truly leads to a step-by-step -step idea of, okay, this is what I am. This is who I am. This is what I can do now. All right. And my third big lesson is that two hours a week is not enough time to build an authentic business. It's not. I mean, it's two hours a week is barely enough time. I mean, some of you take two hours, two hours just to write an article. I'm, I'm pretty fast at content creation now. I can pump it out in 30 to 45 minutes. It might take you two hours just to write an article. It takes me 30 to 45 minutes to write an article, 15 minutes to you know, do a, a short Facebook Live video. And then it takes me 15 to 30 minutes to, to run my ads. It might even take you longer than that, right? So two hours a week is not enough time to create an authentic business. And I wish you would have told me that <laughs> a year ago so that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done this. And I, I'm glad I did this experiment. But in the beginning, I'm like, I'm going to build a business in two hours a week. That is ridiculous. Now I look back at it. I was really curious. I was like, hmm, I wonder if I could. I wonder if it could work two hours a week. No, it's not enough time. How much is enough time? I mean, minimum at, for me, someone who is really well-versed in business now, knows how to do marketing, five hours a week, maybe at a minimum to at five hours a week. Look, think about it. In two hours a week, how could I even see clients? I, I mean, two hours a week, my, my intention really was, I wasn't thinking oh, I'm gonna two hours a week build a six-figure business. No, no, I wasn't thinking. I was thinking two hours a week, I'm gonna start with that. I'm going to build an audience, okay? And then after that, I'll add more hours to see clients and to build out products, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the reality is that I barely have those two hours a week to spend, or I, I, should, I should say I'm, I'm only willing to spend the two hours a week on the side project because my main project, my main business, which is the one you're watching right now, georgecow.com, George Cow Authentic Business Coach, all the courses I've, I teach and create and all. My main business takes up a lot of, I mean, takes, it's a full-time full -time job. It's full-time work. And then when I'm not doing this main business, I am resting, <laughs> okay? Am I allowed to rest, right? Of course, right? All of us are, are need to rest and recharge have hobbies and other things like that to, you know, family and all of us need that time to recharge. And so when I'm not running this business, I am recharging, right? I'm hobbies or whatever it may be. And I'm willing to carve out an additional two hours of focus time a week to, to, to build that side, side project, right? But it's not enough time, you know, and, and if I were willing to, to, to carve out another three to seven hours or three to eight hours a week, then there, there might be a prayer and a hope to start building a business from it. But what I did not have time to do and what I'm not willing to give enough time to do on that side project is to connect personally with my audience. So I don't even have time to, to reply to their comments. I, all their comments come in and a lot of them are like, amen, this is great or whatever. But some comments are more meaningful or even the amens or this is great. I could at least reply just thank you. And that would have started some kind of conversation there. So I didn't have, I didn't allow the time to, to connect personally with my audience. And I'm not saying you should reply to every comment, but at least do it to some comments to, to start to create some relationship with some audience members, because then you could actually connect with them personally to learn more about them, to learn more about what they need and want, which then leads to spending time brainstorming and creating product and services that actually meet your audience's wants and needs. So I didn't have didn't have time to, to connect personally with any audience members, barely. I mean, I had one person, maybe two people. We had exchanged a few messages because, but no, okay. Number two, therefore, I didn't have enough time to brainstorm st strategically what products and services they really want and need from me, okay. And and thirdly, I didn't have time to then go out there and create partnerships, people who already have an audience that I can speak to. Right, that I could trade content promotions with, that I could trade product promotion with. Didn't have any time to even think about that. So these three things, if you want to build an authentic business, you need to make the time to do those things. Are you connecting personally with your audience? I'm not saying you need to spend hours a week. No, just even half hour a week. You have time for that. 
are you doing it? Secondly, are you spending the time to brainstorm and create products and services related to your conversations you have with your audience? And thirdly, are you spending time going out there looking for partnerships? Okay, so I didn't have time for those things. So therefore, I didn't build a business there. I couldn't make any money doing, doing that side project because I didn't have anything to offer them, right? But I have an audience now. If I want to, I could. So my recommendation really is 10 hours a week to build your authentic business or more. If you can spend more time, great. Uh, but 10 hours a week is a good minimum, um, I think, for, for most people doing those four things, content and ads. I would call that one thing, really. Content creation and distribution is one, one thing. Two is to connect personally with your audience members, okay, so that you can learn more about market research, audience research, basically, is the second major, major thing that everyone should be doing. Um, third one is uh, having a, 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 a regular rhythm of offerings Okay, based on your audience research, oh, I'm going to offer this course, I'm going to offer this program, I'm going to offer this service, offer this product. Okay, try those things out, keep testing and seeing what's working better than others and then doing more of that. And then fourth is um, collaborations, collaborations and connections with other influencers, other content creators, so that you can learn more about each other's audiences, learn more about each other, trade promotions for product services, content, things like that. So... I hope this, these lessons are, are beneficial for you. Uh, I am going to continue doing my side project as a hobby, as a passion project. Now that I'm gonna reveal it to the world, reveal it to you and reveal my name to them, okay, finally. Um, after a year, almost nine months of doing videos, I never said my name, right? And now I'm gonna reveal it to you guys, reveal, it to, reveal myself to them. And now, who knows, it might actually, over the years, might turn into a business because now, I'll have a different level of integration and energy to maybe actually turn that into something. Um, but, but up to now I've been hiding, I've been hiding, 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 and it hasn't been that part of the, that part of being hiding, not being transparent because it was a marketing experiment has not allowed me to be, to be go, go fully into this passion, to be fully authentic about it. You see? So uh, now I can be myself. I can say who I am. I can talk about, you know, integration of what I do it's uh, hopefully going to be a, a, a more authentic project now and could to, it might motivate me to spend more time there now to then turn it into something that could make money. So, um, all right, <laughs> without further ado, the name of the Facebook page, you can go look it up, is called Soul Gym, S-O-U-L space G-Y-M, Soul Gym, as in this earth, this life is a gymnasium for the soul. Now, you could say this life is a school, this life is a university, this life is a theme park, or this life is a gym. I just chose gym as a, as a way to, to motivate us to, to work out, to motivate us to realize that it's not always fun to work out, but it always feels good when we decide to work out and, and then when we build muscles, right? And we, we become stronger, we become more capable, we become more confident, we become more joyful. We become healthier. So that's the idea of a gym. It's that, it's that sense of motivation, that sense of, okay, I, I'm, it's not just sit back and, and consume information like a school, right? Schools, real schools, of course, make you do stuff. But, um, but it's, it's a gym is immediately, all right, it's, it's up to you to really do something to, to make yourself fit, spiritually fit, right? Spiritually strong. Um, so that's, it's Soul Gym. It really started uh, I'll tell you the quick story behind it. It started in the beginning in, in July of 20, 2018 as the page used to be called Living Virtue. Living Virtue was the, was the idea. And the idea was like, okay, living virtue, meaning what does it mean to, to live virtues, live virtues in our life? And, um, you know, we are examples of living virtue. All right. So, so it was that, but then the name didn't quite take or people didn't quite get it. And then I, I asked my, after a few months, I think after two months, when I already had a bit of an audience, then I asked them, hey, I'm thinking of changing the name. What do you think of, you know, I gave them several options and Soul Gym was the, the most popular option. So then I went through the process of changing the name of the Facebook page, which took some, some doing because it's such a different name that they first denied it several times. And then I had to go through customer service and finally they approved it. 
And anyway, so it's Soul Gym, and it's just a Facebook page right now. I, I recently started a, um, a medium.com uh, account where I will post the Soul Gym writings there as well. And then now that I'm, you know, uh, I might start a YouTube channel uh, for that. So anyway, thanks for, thanks for um, those of you, some of you follow, followed this, this journey of, of learning these lessons along the way where I, I was posting about learning the lessons of starting something new. And, um, and uh, for those who never heard about this before, well, maybe, now you know, and, and maybe you'll, you'll find some of my spiritual personal growth writings there interesting as well. And uh, thank, you for, um, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, your interest and, and your support. So let me go ahead and take a look to see if there are any comments from you all as I'm doing this as a Facebook Live video. And um, let's see here. All right, thanks for, <laughs> a lot of you have uh, uh, commented here. Some of you have commented, so, several of you. Uh, thanks for your comments, uh, Laura. And um, let me see if I can find all the comments here. Laura, and, and I'll, 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 read some, I'll read some of the comments out here. Um, Daniel Gardner, it's great to see you here. Um, Aleda. Amparo, Tara, Laura, Shweta, Donna, uh, Captain, uh, Tara, thank you so much for your comments. Let me see what the comments are saying here. Um, yeah. Um, so da Danielle says, how much were you spending per week in ads? So I was spending, I think I was spending, since the beginning, I was spending about $200 a month in ads. So let me explain why I spent so much in ads. So yeah, I mean, since then, let me see how much am I spending now? Uh, I have to look at my notes, but, um, but it was, it was, it was at least a hundred dollars a month. I think right now I'm spending two, two to 300 a month on ads there. And here's the way I think about Facebook ads. I think Facebook ads, okay. The money I spend with Facebook ads to promote messages of spiritual growth, upliftment, personal development is some of the most important money I can spend in my life. Um, because I could give to, you know, Red Cross, Greenpeace, you know, <laughs> Blue Shield. No, no. I could give to charities, Habitat for Humanity, you know, Kiva.org. Um, uh, you know, I could, I could give to various charities, right? But the money I give to charities, there's lots of different, you know, I don't know where it really, really goes, honestly. Uh, or I could, I, could, I could take my charity money and put it towards messages that I really believe in, that if people saw those, they're surfing Facebook randomly, they're just seeing various political things, where, and then now they see the spiritual uplifting message. Personally, I think that the most important thing, the most, the most important cause in the whole world as much as 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 the as the is the migrant border you know the 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 mic the border crisis and the migrant children as as important as that is as important as climate the climate crisis is as important as you name it is right animal uh, animal rights is as important all those things are I think the most to me personally this is my personal cause I think the most important cause in the whole entire world is spiritual development. Because if human beings could develop themselves spiritually, then a lot of problems tend to solve themselves. So I put money towards my favorite cause, essentially, which is these messages that I really believe in, that, I, that if, if it could change someone's life and that that could have many, many ripple effects and that they might then donate to these different causes or volunteer for different causes. So that's, that's sort of why I spend so much money. That's kind of, kind of my... My, my, I, of course, I also give to other charities every now and then, but and donated political campaigns. But this is where I spend most of my uh, donation dollars, you might say, or at least consistently anyway. I might send more some, but anyway, so that, that's why. And um, so thank you, Aleda, for your comment there. And let's see. Ampara says, if you didn't create products or establish relationships, how can you assess whether this audience you created would be viable for that phase of a relationship with you. Great, thank you for asking Amparo. So my belief, well, not my belief, I think what, what's true is that everybody spends money, right? <laughs> of course, 
everybody spends money on whatever is of value and interest to them. So my theory, and I don't think this is just a theory, I think this is sort of borne out by lots of marketing experiments, is that if you build an audience, okay, think, of, think, think through this with me. If you have an audience of people who trust what you say, okay, then you can figure out what they buy and sell a better version of that to them or a better fit version of that to them. You can help them spend their money in ways that better match their values and their priorities because they trust you. You have their ear. You see what I mean? So whether or not I would be building products and services that meet their wants and needs or, or whether I become an affiliate and sell other people's products and services and earn a commission from that. I mean, even, even something as simple, right, as being in an Amazon affiliate. If they, if they just, if I, it turns out that they like to buy toilet paper, right, <laughs> instead of spiritual development courses, they like to buy toilet paper and, you know, organic food, then great. I'll start running ads on my page to say support, or I actually, I could even run ads on my page saying, will you, if you like these veggies, will you support me? A dollar a month, ten dollars a month, fifteen dollars a month, twenty, thirty dollars a month will get you different. You know, I could literally just take money directly from them as as a content creator because that's an actual thing these days, right? But if, as a joke, right, as a ridiculous joke, if, if they want to buy toilet paper, I could run a f- Amazon a- affiliate ads for toilet paper, subscribe and save, and now they're buying toilet paper through my Amazon link, and now I get a monthly commission from Amazon. And if enough people do that now, that's, that's a joke, right? But, but that's what I mean is I can sell them, you can sell your audience anything that they actually want and need. And you need to figure that out with them, right? Have, having a relationship with them. So anything from <laughs> something as basic as toilet paper or food or, you know, whatever it may be. So, um, so yeah, Tara says, I really believe in engagement, connecting with your audience. I like comments and short personal calls. I've met several friends along the way. And uh, yeah, thank you, Laura and Shweta for your comments and uh, Aleda as well. Um, Donna, thank you. And let's see here. Wendy, thanks for your comment as well. Kay, thank you so much. All right, well, this, this <laughs> video has gone long enough. Thanks all for joining me. And um, I wish you, uh, I hope this has been inspiring for you, for you to continue building your authentic business. Remember, if you build an audience and you get to know them, you can sell anything. You can make money with an audience who loves you for genuinely who you are. That's the message. That's the main thing. All right. Have a great day. And uh, maybe I'll see you over at Soul Gym. All right. Bye for now.